what have been some sort of growth experiences that you found where you've sort of learned the most from a professional point of view? Oh, look, I, I say this quite often because I don't, I don't think it happens to a lot of people today, but I, I, I just recall the first time I got sacked, you know, the first, the first time, you know, I got dragged into a room and basically told, yep, your services are not required anymore. And cause you, I was probably living in a bit of a, a bit of a comfort zone, you know, the couple of programs I was working in had been really successful. The program that I got the sack from, we'd been successful that year. So you're probably in this comfort zone. So that becomes a really huge wake up call. And, and I kind of remember, you know, I've, I've said this story to a number of people. I kind of remember stepping away from, from that experience going, oh, I'm never going to let that happen to me again. So what do I need to do? How do I need to continually look to make myself better? How do I need to continually develop myself? How do I need to improve the way I communicate, the way I invite, you know, engage so that I don't fall into that, that comfort zone. And what about the facilities and, and technology involved like compared to a sporting, I guess a team sporting team or an Olympic athlete in terms of gym recovery centers, um, you, you mentioned access to staff there. Yep. It sounds like there's a relatively similar access yep. to staff support, but yeah, gym, I guess any GPS or objective measures, force plates and things like that. So again, this is, again, this is all new. So, you know, what you've, what you've got, uh, um, our programs are very varied, are very varied and different. So in some places, you know, we would have the, that you would walk into it and it looked like the typical sport model. So it's an integrated performance team sitting in an environment, you know, there's physio, there's S and C, you know, there's performance site, there's nutrition, they're integrated around a, a, a specific performance group. You know, they, they run for all intents and purposes what looks like a performance sport program with your, you know, your performance staff meetings, all of those objective measures and markers that are in place or, or developing. For the strength and conditioning coaches working in this field or looking to work in this field, what would the, um, what would a periodized annual plan look like? Or is there not one? Is it more of six weeks on the blocks and, <laughs> and seeing what's in front of you? If yeah, no. Ready. No, yeah. It, well, we come back to that. It, it it is into that perpetual space. Um, but in saying that, we we are able to start to get um, places starting to think about what annual planning would look like. And you know, we've probably got a couple of distinct phases within a year where you, you know you've got the early start of the year um, where you're probably getting people coming back from leave and going into a bit of a GPP type type setup and structure. You've probably got a latter start of the year where there's potentially activity and 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 training uh, training activities happening. So you're in a you know you're in a bit more of a a maintenancey type phase. So we are starting to be able to develop some of those phases. I guess the rehab side of things for those that get injured, what does that process look like? Do they hire people outside um, privately, or is there support there in the? Digital? Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So I mean, defence has the luxury, you know. As a defence member, there's um there's Joint Health Command. You know, health manages a lot of that rehab. Um, health manages a lot of you know all of that injury um, return to work type space. But again, I think it's I think it's like any performance space. You know, um, we need to come back to a good understanding of the occupation that we're we're working in and we're operating in to be able to then understand what what a proper return to work pattern looks like. Um, to make, you know, it, it's the same type of thing, you know, um, you see it in performance sport where, you know, we haven't done an accurate, you know, we haven't done a, a, an adequate reload of that individual before we've returned to competition. It's the same type of thing. You know, we see examples where we probably haven't done an, an adequate reload of that individual before they've gone back to, to the workspace. How often would a career cut short due to a severe injury? Oh yeah. Look, that's, Look, retention is 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 big. Um, you know, ultimately, like we we have a we drive a philosophy within HPS within within um, RAF, which is you know fit for life. So ultimately, yes, I'm preparing people to do their job and to do their job better. But ultimately, I'm I'm wanting to make sure that people are preparing themselves to be able to go and enjoy their life after defence to be able to enjoy their, you know, their family life, their, their life with their kids, you know, that's the stuff that's really, really important as well. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, come back to that, 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 
that injury mitigation piece, we want to alleviate as much risk as we can to injury to to prevent those long those long term injury pieces happen. Um, and that's that's an area that we really want to look at and and really want to drive towards.